Hi guys, if you have followed my channel at least for the last few months, then you have noticed that I have collected already some broken uh, Sun 1000 and 2000 inverters. The problem uh, with this collection is that it comes from my own systems, so it's not from somebody else. I'm sitting on uh, quite some damage here and all these three inverters now have a common fault and it's a AC side fault. But there are different levels of damage on those inverters and because of my last inverter which failed now, I'm now forced actually to uh, counteract this and I have started to order components for repair and because I already uh, am sourcing components, I thought, you know what, why not just repair all three inverters at once. And this is what I'm going to try within the next few weeks. Today's video is not much about a repair. This one inverter in front of me is the most seriously dam damaged one. This one got an uh, external over voltage surge and additionally to the standard uh, faults or faulty components which I will show you which all three of the inverters do have this one has also burnt traces and a seriously damaged measurement circuitry for that circuitry I need a lot of components and today we are going to find out what all is damaged on that small circuitry here so that I know what I have to really get for this. But at the end, in a few weeks, I want to present you three videos of three successful inverter repairs. Hopefully, let's see uh, if we can pull this off. Okay. Uh, let's take a closer look. On this inverter I will tell you the standard issues which happen when you have uh, an AC fault on these sun inverters and then we are going to take a close look on what actually extra happened additionally uh, here with this inverter. This here is the power board of a sun 2000 inverter. This side is DC, this side here AC. The AC input usually comes from here and the first thing here which can fail is the fuse. So fuse I had to order for this board here. Then if we turn over to the back side You will see here in the Sun 2000 version we have four current sensing resistors, shunt resistors. These ones usually when you have a short fail completely. They also go short. All of them need to be replaced. And they go to these high power MOSFETs here, two pieces. The MOSFETs are the second transistors from the uh, down here, one side and the other side. They usually also go short. And not just that, what also gets damaged, and maybe we can see it here, there's always one gate resistor, 20 ohms, and then we have a gate driver. The gate driver also in this case has blown out its top, so the gate driver needs to be changed and most probably also the gate resistor. So these are the standard things you have to always uh, change with every AC uh, fault. To do that, so first unscrew all these transistors and then remove the heatsink 
this is done here by the screws on the bottom of the board. So now the special things which happened to this uh, inverter. We have here measurement traces going from the current sense resistors to the uh, measurement circuitry on the other side. And at this board, those two traces burned out and even disconnected. So where do those traces go? Well, they go up and down several times on the board, but finally they end up here on two resistors. Those two resistors should be one kilo ohm. We will later on measure how much they have now. And then on the other side, they would go into a double diode. So this component is a double diode, common uh, cathode here. And from there, they will go to another resistor. This is a 10K resistor. And each of those sides will go through this next component. And this is a protective diode a circuit here, I see. And after this one at the output is our microcontroller. Another set of components which is necessary here for the AC. You can see it here already marked AC, N and L. This is a set of resistors here. So it's always 360 kilo ohms each resistor, two in series. This is taking measurements from the AC input here. So let's see if we can measure the actual situation here now. Uh, if you can see it, maybe already the resistors here are burnt. So this got a high voltage surge and it destroyed at least the input side of the two resistors here. Okay, let's start with the two uh, resistors at the measurement input here. They should have one kilo ohm according to their marking. Number one has 15 mega ohms, so that one is open. Number two, 35 kilo ohms. So this one is also damaged. Our uh, diode here, common cathode, so minus two, the cathode is, is there on the down. We need a meter in the diode uh, mode. Let's see. And this one is showing open. So it has no continuity anymore. The second one side is also, also open. So there is uh, no uh, continuity. This one, the diode blew out completely. So now the next resistor here, it should be 10 kilo ohms. And this one is showing five ohms. But here the problem will not be the resistor itself because the five ohms could also come from a short. We can test that. I put one probe here to ground and let's see what the side of the resistor say. One is at two ohms, so this could be ground. And the other side is at 5.8 ohm, which we measured before. Uh, so we could actually or probably have a short in this circuitry. What do our other resistors do here? All of them should have uh, 360 kilo ohms. This one is 360. This one is 360. This one 180. And this one also 180. That's very interesting because they, are, they have the half of the value as they should have. How comes this? Is there maybe another problem somewhere? I don't know yet. But anyway, we can order those resistors as well. So what we need to find out now is 
if we have a short somewhere in the circuitry. So maybe uh, this diode I see here is broken, maybe some capacitor. But of course, in the worst case, this here is the microcontroller. If that one is shorted, then it's game over anyway, because the microcontroller is programmed. It is running a certain set of instructions which are related to this anti-eye landing here. And if that component would need to be changed, you need a originally reprogrammed microcontroller for that. And of course, you won't get that like this. Okay, so what we can do is inject voltage. Here I will solder a lead on the ground and then we will inject voltage and try to find a hot spot. Maybe we can find the shorted component. I have prepared my setup for the voltage injections. I have my bench power supply set to 4 volts and 1 amp. So if I go to ground, maybe you can see 1 amp is drawn. And I'm going to inject now voltage on the other side of the resistor before we were talking about, which had shown 5 ohms to ground, because that side should not be grounded, of course, and this is a 10k resistor, there should be a much higher resistance on that side. I will just try it like this now. First, what I can do is see with my finger if something got hot and uh, the second option is I can take some uh, alcohol IPA uh, which we can then put on the board and see if one of the components is evaporating it. Okay, let's see. Hold uh, on to that spot here and the power supply is drawing now 0.6 amps and oh there's something hot and it's the MCU that's not good uh, the MCU in this area went extremely hot and yeah I can reduce the current a little bit let's see put a bit of uh, alcohol on it if this is the only spot inject current 0 0.5 and yeah I see the alcohol evaporating boiling in the middle of the MCU maybe you can see it now the MCU is already going dry yeah and it's hot Oh well, oh well, so if you see uh, my initial feeling at the first video which I made, I said that I'm not going to even try to uh, fix this one because I saw that the damage went into the measurement circuitry and once the MCU gets shorted, you know the manufacturer would have to send you either a programmed MCU or you would have to get this one from a donor board and I don't have a donor board. I want to repair all my boards, right? So this one is now really unfixable. But anyways, we have still two more and that one don't have any issues on the measurement circuitry as far as I could measure out the components. They're still all uh, intact. So the damage there should only be limited on the power circuitry so the shunt resistors the MOSFETs and then the gate driver and this we are going to then do as soon I'm getting my components and yeah, hopefully at least two of the inverters we can then call a successful fix right 
no MCU, no fix. So still, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave your comments on the down. Subscribe to the channel and I see you next time.